Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So in today's video, which is actually probably gonna take over the course of an entire week, we are going to go ahead and start framing in my garage. So I didn't wanna bore you all with the same stuff. Uh, today I went ahead and had four more loads of 57 round washed stone delivered. And as you can see, we got the entire garage done. It's not 100% level. Uh, we'll take care of that with the laser level at a later time. And in fact, we still need a little bit more stone to come in here because we do need to kind of pitch this garage. We're not having a floor drain or anything. So from the back wall out to the garage doors, there'll be a probably a eighth of an inch slope all the way out and then when we get out here from the slab leaving the house down to where i've got a string line here and down where i've got these forms getting set up we have a quarter of an inch drop per foot so any water that comes in here and hits this garage door will come down to about there it'll trickle out and then it'll really rush away i know a lot of people like to put the concrete down lower like kind of make a, a lip in here i hate that especially with lowered cars and with the porsche having a front uh lip on it that sticks out even further and about three inches lower uh hitting those extra little curbs if you will i hate them so this entire garage is just going to have a beautiful slope all the way down and then more of a drastic slope as it gets out to here quarter of an inch per foot may not sound like a lot but trust me it's plenty here we started framing in uh, where that uh, apron is going to come out to. It's a two foot off of the house and it is pitching away this way. It's pitching away this way and it's pitching away this way. So both aprons in the corners will have all of the water getting away from the house in both directions. Uh, the aprons throughout here where the doors are, obviously they're only gonna slope away this way, away from the house. So I gotta go to the store. I purchased all of the framing lumber for the entire garage, the windows, the jack studs, the cripple studs, the LVL headers that I'm gonna use for above the doors, it, it's all there. Uh, so I got to go pick that up here in a little bit. And then, of course, I'll need a few more 2x4s to go ahead and complete this out. And if you notice, the string line here is obviously high, but when it gets to the edge of this board here, the string line is touching that board as it is touching that 8-footer down there. So we just basically have to have all of the 2x4s that are going to be from this gap right here. They just need to be touching the top of the string line, and we'll know that we have a quarter-inch slope per foot away from the uh, house and the garage. With the extra stone, we also started backfilling a little bit. Uh, I've kind of been lazy. I just hate this trench with a passion. I hate going down in there. I hate flipping the fabric over, unrolling these huge uh, 65 foot long tarps kind of down in here, or this dimple membrane is kind of a pain in the butt. I'm kind of debating how I'm going to do this, and I'm not really looking forward to getting all three of these set up here so that I can cut holes in the dimple membrane so it slides on. This needs to be me and Aaron or me and somebody else uh, installing this. This is just too much of a pain for me to do by myself. So again, kind of been slacking on it. Not really a big deal. It's all washing off because it's all waterproofed anyway. Uh, but this right here, we'll go ahead and keep that concrete in there. So when we pour it, it's not going to go anywhere. We're going to finish off these last uh, nine footers. If you didn't hear me say that before, the garage doors have a rough opening of 18 feet and nine feet. And then you have nine feet tall and nine feet tall. So these things are huge. They're massive. Uh, the determining height of the garage, again, we, on top of the sill plate, we are going to have roughly a 12 foot stud going all the way up here where the top sill plate's gonna be. Now, I plan on only using two pieces of OSB for the outside sheathing, and I do plan on getting the insulated OSB by Hubert Zip, so that way it's got a waterproofing membrane already on it, 
and I'll come down and it'll flush into the waterproofing membrane with the rubbar wall that I already put down here on the wall and the uh, outside of the sill plate. So it'll be one continuous seam of green waterproofing and it'll be 100% airtight, watertight, etc. So I have to deduct the sill plate height and the double top plate height from those 12 footers. So really it's uh, 11 foot, seven and a half inches for each stud. So the entire uh, wall assembly though, basically I'll be able to take an eight foot OSB piece of sheathing and then a four foot and that way to the very top of the sill plate to the very bottom of the bottom plate or the bottom sill plate, that'll be exactly 12 feet. So the uh, OSB sheets will only have to be cut one time in the middle. I won't have to cut it uh, twice or any more. So we'll make all the cuts at the stud locations because these studs and everything, they're not exactly 8 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot anyway. You've got to cut usually a little bit off anyway to get to that height. So it doesn't uh, really matter to cut down uh, roughly, what, three, four and a half inches cutting off of them. So we're going to go to Menards. We're going to pick everything up. And then I'm probably going to go ahead and I'll only be able to install... Uh, these ones here by myself because I can push it straight against the house and screw them in. Same with those. Uh, these are obviously easy because there's a lot of room down here where we're screwing. Uh, basically, the garage floor slab, again, is five inches thick. So I got a board here that's sitting in here that's five inches. And then we're Tapcon screwing all the way through here into the concrete. And then we've got a couple construction screws up here that are screwing into the uh, sill plate here. So these things are pretty solid here. Um, and we can pretty much frame those in today. I might be able to hang the headers by myself. Uh, if I set my ladder up here and just go up here and set it on there and then stand it up and try and nail it in, we'll just see how difficult that is. Wish me luck. We're gonna go pick everything up. It's a big load, an expensive load of lumber and wood. So we'll be back in a little bit. It's the next day. We were able to make it to Menard yesterday and pick up all of the lumber for the garage. Uh, there might be a few pieces missing. I didn't really calculate uh, where the header is going to go and then where the sill plate is going to go up there. So a couple boards that need to come down here and uh, split that joint. They're called cripple studs, basically. Uh, I might not have enough for that, but we'll take care of that at a later date. But I am uh, very happy with the truck here. Uh, they say it only has a 5,000 pound rating, even though the regular Colorado has a uh, 7,000 pound. I did calculate all this wood after the fact, probably should have done it beforehand, but all of this wood comes in at about 2,800 pounds. I believe the trailer weighs about 22. So we were pretty much right there. Uh, but I think this truck can handle a heck of a lot more weight anyway. But right now we've got both uh, garages almost done. Uh, last night I set up the laser uh, on the tripod right there shot a laser line over to the one that I already had set up and Wherever that line fell on all four of these boards. I measured down and then one of these boards is uh, that one actually That's my uh, board that's not moving. That's the height that I want to go off from here all the way down So based on that laser line right there I mark that one, this one, and that one, measure down, and they all now need to be the exact same height. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to set this LVL up here for the header. Uh, it's a 95 pound board at its full 20 foot length. This 10 footer over here that I need to cut down to nine feet, that I should be able to throw up there by myself, but uh, we'll see. Just gonna set up the GoPro and see how much I can get done today. One detail here is, I am cutting off five inches off the bottom of these boards. These are ground contact uh, treated lumber. So when we pour the concrete, the concrete will come under here and it'll flow under there. And then basically this will now act as a king stud. The weight of this will be supported by the bolts and screws that are holding it into the concrete, but it will have a concrete base under it to where all the load can be transferred down into this right here. Uh, I didn't want to put it all the way down to the concrete here because it will eventually rot out. So 
the higher we can get it off the ground and away from concrete and not have concrete completely surround it where when it rains back in this corner because the weather does come from the west and push rain in here so if it does come in here and push and then as the water drains away this concrete apron in here can always be wet so i don't want that five inches down there and eventually rot out one day so getting it up here getting it off of the concrete but then still having a concrete base that can support that load uh, that's why i'm cutting back that five inches uh, the other thing that we're going to do is when we do hang these uh, headers up here, I am going to double plate it. So basically right in here, supporting load on here and going up, we're going to basically do a jack stud. So you got a king stud supporting all the weight from the header down to the foundation. And then this is basically, I mean, if it was a window, this is technically a king stud, but this is just kind of a second reinforcement that goes up there and will also support the header. I'm definitely not screwing this entire garage together. So I went and got one of my uh, portable compressors, got it my framing nailer, and we're gonna start putting this whole thing on now, hope with nails and not screws. All right, so I got the headers up, I got the jack studs up, and right now I'm just leaving the bracing on and we're perfectly straight. We're not tilting anywhere. All of the uh, LVL up top are completely straight. So uh, right now I consider this pretty much a success. I would not recommend doing those by yourself again. Uh, I did leave those the full 20 footer. I was gonna cut them down and then it dawned on me. There's no reason to cut them down because you've got kind of a support board there splitting those apart so that these are equal all the way up and down and it can just rest on that plus it gives you plenty of uh, screwing and nailing surface to kind of come up through that board and screw in and then we also towed screwed if you will and then over here on each end I left them long like I said but I am gonna have to I did cut them off already because there is gonna be a stud that goes from here all the way up to the sill plate which is uh or the top plate which is going to be 12 foot high so that's why i had to cut those ends off and the uh, ends on the 10 footers off so that way they're flush with this board here so i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to do the boards uh or the uh the studs uh, these walls are not a hundred percent straight uh, for a few reasons one There's a little bit of a bow in this wall here going this way and also because these are two by twelves you cannot get two by twelves perfect. Uh, they usually end up like cupping up or down. So these boards here actually kind of have a little bit of a bow in them. So you kind of have to take measurement from the outside of here to the outside of here and see which one uh, is the taller end. And that's what you need to cut the board to. Now, like I said, we are using two by eights. So we're not doing the full spread of this uh, 11 and a half inches, but because the concrete kind of settled, and when I bolted this down, it bolted down the center and then kind of left the ends kind of sticking up a little bit higher. So the two by eight mostly is gonna rest over here. And then as it comes down into the middle, it's if I cut the line completely straight, 
it's going to go over and then there's going to be a gap. So I'm either going to have to shim it from this side or we're just going to have to cut each and every one of these studs by themselves. So because I'm probably going to have to do that, the problem is how do I get the sill plate completely flat? So I think what we're going to have to do is kind of the same thing I did, I guess, with all of the... Uh, 2x12s here that are holding up these headers now. I'm probably going to have to find some way to nail these down to the sill plate, maybe put some bracing laterally and uh, off the front and the back, put the laser level up again at nighttime, and then I can laser level and mark a line all the way around every single stud. That way I'll get them 100% straight. So unfortunately it's not that easy traditional you just build the wall on the ground and then you have a couple guys stand it up uh, nail it down put supports on it and then you're done but because we're already 30 some inches off of the ground here plus we have a 12 foot tall wall to build that on the ground stand it up get it up 30 inches that just seems like a lot bigger pain plus it's pretty much just me on the weekdays building so there's nothing that I can stand up so I may have to just put the first 2x12 against uh, the garage or the basement wall here. That will kind of be my stationary well supported because that's four feet of ICF right there that I can screw in. And then I can go ahead and run the next one over, probably put the blocking in between it. That way they're not going to want to fall this way. And then falling this way and backwards uh, to the front of the house or the back of the house probably shouldn't happen because it's a two by eight it's so long it's going to give you a uh, good lateral support front to back uh really i just need to worry about uh falling this way so let's go ahead and throw up a couple let's see what happens but uh pretty happy about this so far that turned out good those those things are 95 pounds a piece and that was not easy to put that first one up I want to go over two details that I just noticed. Uh, if you remember, I always say try and think two to three steps ahead. So the sheathing for the garage that I have decided to do is the Hubert Zip Systems R sheathing. I'm going to go with the R6. Basically, that means it's a 7 16 OSB panel bonded to a poly ISO one inch piece of rigid foam. That's going to give the garage outside already an R6.6 .6 value, which is awesome. Now, that creates kind of a problem when you're framing because you've got an inch of foam on top of your OSB. So what I've decided to do is for this wall here, I kind of wanted the OSB to be cut back an inch of foam off so that way the OSB could come down here and I could nail the OSB here. The problem is, is right here. Now you've, you're running down this wall here and then you're running into 7 16ths of OSB sticking off and this isn't gonna work for our siding in stone. I don't wanna have this 7 16ths gap. So on the front of the house and the back of the house, I decided to set the stud in the one inch and seven sixteenths. So that way, flush with this wall and flush with this wall will be flush with the Hubert Zips R panel. So that way we can tape this seam, we can reflash with the rubber wall here, and we can make this all completely 100% airtight and watertight. Now, where things change is the wall over here for the front of the garage. The issue with that is all of these 2x12s and everything are completely flush with the sill plate. Now, I could push that uh, Hubert zip panel in here so it's completely flush, but I don't want all of this exposed inside this and everything. So because all of this wall can be completely the same, the same as all of the front and the back of the house wall can be completely the same. What I'm gonna do here for the sheathing is I'm gonna just take away the 7 16ths of an inch for the OSB. That way I can cut uh, an inch of foam off of here 
and three inches of foam off of here. That way the OSB panel will sit three inches over and it'll sit an inch and a half down here, which is what I originally wanted for the front and the back. But again, because of that wall right there for the front of the house, I want that flat. I don't want it sticking out over here. I don't mind if there's seven sixteenths of an inch down here, but because of that wall being kind of like that, it creates an issue that I need that flush, unfortunately. So this 7 16 sticking out here will be the same 7 16 sticking out there and there. So all of this wall will look exactly the same and all of the front and the back of the house will look the same. Now, to be able to put those OSB panels down, uh, secure basically, because now I don't have a sill plate to nail to, where I've got my stud locations marked, I'm probably just going to take a 2x4 and run a 2x4 in between these stud locations, screw it down to the sill plate. Now, the back side of the OSB panel, you actually have something to screw into instead of just having that panel where it can move uh, because, again, these are two foot on center. So that panel could want to go like this in the wind. So you do want something to secure that down to. So I'll uh, cut some two by fours, throw them down in there. You'll never see them because all the insulation will be in here and then the drywall will come on up. You'll never know there's a two by four in there, but that'll be something to screw that OSB panel down into. So again, just something to think several steps ahead of the game. So that way, you know, you're not going to have to modify and change anything uh, once all of your other products uh, show up. This board is a little bit wider than this board. So there's a, a lip right here. There's also a lip right here. That's not a problem down here per se because up there in that corner is completely flush, but that board right there ever so slightly is kicked out up at the top. So we're gonna have to get a planer and run it up here to flush this. So that way all of this can be completely flush with everything. So drywall install will be a little bit easier. Just sucks with lumber that sometimes you get uh, 11 and a quarter sometimes you get 11 and a half they're never eight foot long 10 foot long 12 foot long they're always different lengths that you have to cut down so unfortunately that's just something that you have to play with when framing with lumber i'm glad i only have to do the garage because doing this entire house out of lumber this is why i hate wood If you notice every now and again, I am using uh, the framing uh, air nailer, but I am still using screws sometimes. Sometimes when the bows are a little, uh, the wood is a little bit more bowed, uh, the nails are hard to get it sucked in. And those boards right there, the uh, nails coming through the two outside for the header, uh, the nails are sticking out a little bit. So the board wasn't really wanting to go all the way in. So I'm putting a screw every now and again that way it sucks the board completely together and you help closing off that air gap. Uh, the sun is setting. Uh, probably looks a lot brighter on camera, but it's actually getting pretty dark out. Uh, I didn't get too many walls done today. Uh, we had some friends stop over, so we were chatting for a while, but basically, uh, we got several of the studs up here. This is going to be one of the window openings and we're going to have another one over here and that's going to mirror on the back side too. Uh, it's not 100% done. I still got to get a, a cripple stud up here and I'm actually waiting for it to get uh, super dark because I've got the laser level set back up right there. And I need to go ahead and mark all of these with the laser level. I need my top plates to be 100% level or else the roof trusses are going to look uh, poor from the outside. The roof is going to look off. So once it gets uh, dark enough, I'll be able to see the laser cast a light on all of these uh, studs here. I've already picked the one stud that's basically going to be the master stud. Basically what you do is... One of these studs is gonna be the master stud, the one against the house here, okay? So we know that we wanna use an eight foot piece of sheathing and then cut a piece of sheathing in half and get four feet. So that'll be exactly 12 feet. So these 12 foot studs are gonna be have to cut down to 11 feet, seven and a half inches. So we're measuring down from here 
on a master stud. Then we'll go ahead and measure out the laser line going all the way down on all these other studs. And then whatever the dis difference is from the top of the uncut stud down to the laser line and whatever the cut stud for the actual height down to the laser line, subtract those two differences and then you know exactly what the cut off on all of these. So that way it'll be completely flat and the top plates will go on completely flat. So, well, I gotta wait for the sun to go down a little bit more to figure those out. And then tomorrow, I think I'll be able to finish this wall. I'm probably gonna have to rent a uh, boom lift because even with my ladder right there fully extended, and me standing on the very top run, I'm still not tall enough to get all the way up and cut those uh, appropriately. So I'm gonna have to get a boom that goes at least 12, 13, 14, 15, probably 15 feet high. So I might go and rent that tomorrow actually and knock out this wall to make it a little bit uh, quicker so we don't have to keep getting up and down on this ladder. And that should be uh, good for that. Uh, so we'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early. So another day coming to a close. Uh, we got the front of the garage all done. Uh, I don't think it's 100%. Uh, we still got some tilting in and out. And I apologize right now, it is dark as can be. So we're barely just picking this up on camera. But uh, I'm thinking I might ask Brian uh, to let me rent some of those ICF braces again. And we can go ahead and put them on the outside here and we can get uh, this wall pushed and pulled. Uh, looks great this way, just not so much uh, when you're looking at it this way. So i got to figure out some straightness uh, before I put on the sheathing. Uh, good news is, is the garage foam and the basement foam have showed up. Uh, I got to go pick it up tomorrow so we can actually pause on this project here and we can start on the uh, concrete here and the concrete in the basement. So we can go ahead and order up the uh, rest of the sand for the basement. We can put in all of the uh, foam, the PEX tubing, and the uh, vapor barrier down. And that should wrap that up. So we should be good here in the next couple days to pour concrete actually. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this video up here. We'll start another video on doing all the concrete, the PEX tubing, the foam and stuff like that. But uh, basically what you saw today, we just need to do that one more time on the back wall. And then we need to finish off the uh, top plates up here with all the cripple studs above all of these uh, headers for the garage doors. And then just run across here, that'll be done duplicate everything we did on the front on the back and then the garage will be completely roughed in for framing and then hopefully by the time the concrete hardens uh, we might even be able to order the trusses get a crane in here lift them up and put them in but again we'll start that on another video so please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content make sure you turn the bell on so you get notified when we have the next video uh, up and posted we're quickly climbing on subscribers so i want to thank all of you personally in the comment section please go ahead and ask any questions that you have and aaron and i will see you next time